in in the history of your microbiology that is two classes has been allotted and the first class that is on why you have to read the history is not it then discovery of microorganisms theory and that is spontaneous generation theory it is also known as abiogenesis then uh, do you tell me why you have to re read the history why history is needed hmm? why history is needed unless we know the history we will not able to understand a particular subject clearly therefore that is history is very essential then history is again required to know the previous works hmm? and to formulate some new works that is the main things to follow the guidelines actually we have to go for neat history then the discovery of microorganisms that is that class is already completed is not it today we will go for spontaneous generation theory spontaneous generation theory the doctrine of that spontaneous generation theory is also known as a biogenesis in the ancient time actually there was a belief that the living organisms are formed spontaneously from the non living matter and that was believed up to without any question up to renaissance and that, that belief is known as the theory of your spontaneous generation or abiogenesis hmm? clear what is abiogenesis or spontaneous generation theory hmm? clear okay and it was that spontaneous generation theory was believed without any question up to the period of renaissance then as far back from the time of aristotle have you heard about aristotle hmm? aristotle that is his period was from 384 bc to 322 bc what do you mean by bc before christ that means before the birth of your jesus christ it was believed that as far back as the time of aristotle hmm, it was believed that some living organisms like your frogs flies mites etc were originated from the spontaneously from the fertile mud then from the rotten materials and also from the rains that means the living organisms are formed spontaneously from these things hmm? then this was believed this uh, spontaneous generation theory was continue up to 17th century up to 17th century it was believed then von helmenton and his period was from 1577 to 1644 and he supported the theory of abiogenesis that means he was the strong believer proponent of this abiogenesis theory or spontaneous generation theory then he proved that the maggots that is some worm like substances could be produced spontaneously when the meat is exposed to heat and air when you expose in a flask or in some container if you expose the meat any meat that is from any animal that is exposed to heat and air then some organisms in like organisms or some worm like organisms that is your known as maggot is formed 
then Francisco Reddy, then Reddy in the year, actually in the 1665, but his period was from 1626 to 1677. And uh, he opposed the theory of that is spontaneous generation or abiogenesis. And what he has done? He has covered the flux. The previous scientist kept the meat in an open condition. But he, that is ready, he covered the flux with some gauze or some transparent sheet. Then he proved that there is no formation of living organisms. That means he nullified the theory of spontaneous generation or he disapproved the spontaneous generation theory that petho microorganism could not be produced spontaneously from the from this mutton or from the meat spontaneously. Hmm? Again, the period of then a John Needham come. Have you heard about Needham? Hmm? Needham actually he was a nematologist. He discovered the nematode. Nematode, have you heard about nematode? Hmm? That is some worm like organisms. What he has done? Hmm? Needham in the year and his period was from 1729 to 1799. He opposed again opposed that theory of your findings of your ready. Reading, Reddy's finding was nullified by that your, that your Needham and he supported the theory of abiogenesis and what he has done, he has covered the flux with, uh, with milk with uh, some corks, hmm? with uh, some corks that is made up of something, corks you know, corks that is generally with um, some your kuhila like that type of things that he covered with some corks and some of the fluxes with your meat he has heated. Hmm? Even then he observed the presence of some animal like organisms, animal cools. And this finding of meat harm again encourages the interest of the people on the theory of spontaneous generation. Though Reddy proved experimentally that the organism could not be produced spontaneously, but again Needham observed the presence of spontaneous presence of your microorganism. Then another scientist that is your Lazaro Spalizeni and his period was from 1729 to 1799. He opposed the theory. And what he has done? He has boiled the meat in a flux. But the neck of the neck of this flux, round bottom flux, he boiled the meat. Hmm? But during the boiling process, what he has done? He has sealed the neck of that flux. So that their water can, water, uh, air cannot move into the boiling flux, boiling broth. Hmm? Then he don't observe any formation of microorganisms. That means he experimentally proved that there are microorganisms cannot be produced spontaneously in the mutton pot. But Needham again objected that due to the exclusion of air, he may not observe the presence of your microorganisms. And he regarded the air as a vital force which is required for the formation of life. Vital force. And during the heating processes that under during heating, under exclusion of air, that organism cannot grow. That is, uh, 
Any uh, confusion on vital force? Hmm? Any confusion on vital force? Air is uh, considered as a vital force and that air is needed for the development of microorganisms in the blood. Then another scientist that is your Francois Apert, he came in the year 1805, he introduced food canning process and that food canning process is known as apartization. Actually he was that apart, apart was a wine maker and he sterilized the <coughs> wine in some thick bottles, thick glass bottles. Then that your wines were free of any microorganisms and that is the beginning of the canning processes. Canning you know, canning is one of the process of sterilization and preservation of your fruit juice, then soups, then wines, etc. That process is known as your apparatization. Of 18th century, some scientists like your Priestley, Cavendish and Leverish come and they work on the work on the laid out some experiments on the chemistry of gases. On the chemistry of gases he has, they have some work and they discovered the oxygen which is considered as a vital unit for the growth of the pathogen or for any living beings. Then school Z and his period was from 1815 to 1817. And the priestly Cavendish, they have laid out some experiments on the chemistry of gases and they discovered the oxygen and which is considered as a vital force for the life of any microorganisms. Then, Franzi Skulzi in the year, it, and his period was from 1815 to 1875 and he, they, he has admitted air that is a vital force. Vital, air is considered as a vital force for the growth of microorganisms, is not it? By several scientists, that is by Needham and by Priestley and by Skulzi and he admitted air, allowed the passage of air through the boiling broth of the meat. Then after the, but he has treated the broth with some chemicals that is with the sulfuric acid and the caustic potash. First he has treated the broth with some sulfuric acid and the caustic potash. Then he allowed our air to pass through that heated broth and he don't observe any spontaneous occurrence of your microorganism. That means he, he disproved the theory of spontaneous generation. Thus several works has been done to disprove the spontaneous generation theory. Then, but those several experiments were done to disprove the theory of abiogenesis. But the people of that time don't believe that because and need harm also, they don't believe that because of the some treatments, though air is allowed to pass through the broad organism, microorganisms don't involve spontaneously due to some treatments only. They comment that due to some treatments the microorganisms don't occur spontaneously. Therefore, another experiment was done by Squan and his period was from 1811 to 1882 and he used the heat 
to disprove the theory of abiogenesis. What he has done? He has conducted one experiment. Hmm? He put the broth, mutton broth in this round bottom flux that is with the with some neck, round bottom flux. And they, that um, that broth was heated. That, that broth was heated and during the time of your boiling or sterilization process, some air is allowed to enter through this your glass tube. Air is allowed to enter into the broth from the atmosphere. But that air was heated before enter into the fluxes broth. Then air will circulate from the atmosphere after heating, the, during heating this your air will be sterilized and that sterilized hair is allowed to enter to this your broth during the process of your heating. Then what will happen during sterilization some vapor will come, is not it? Hot vapor will come and that hot vapor will comes out through this exhaust pipe, exhaust pipe in that flux and it is accumulated as water. Any doubt on this experiment? Hmm? Any doubt? Will you be able to draw? Huh? Actually there are some flame, hmm? that is for heating some flame is used here also. Here, air from the atmosphere allowed to enter into the boiling broth after sterilization by heating. Hmm? Clear? Any question? Any question on this experiment? Hmm? You understand? Okay then. Then another scientist that is Skordor and Dawes in the year 1952. Actually he conducted the same experiment as done by Squan. But he has used some cotton plug in the glass tube through which air is moved. That is the experiments of the von Das and what he has done. Uh, here the mutton board was placed in this round bottom flux hmm? and through this pipe the what uh, air is allowed to move enter into this broth during the process of your boiling. And uh, there are some cotton air he has put some cotton in the tube and the air is moved through the cotton plug. When air is moved through the cotton plug then germ whatever germ or whatever organism is present in the atmosphere they can't pass through the cotton plug. Is not it? That is the main thing of um, main benefit of using cotton plug, is not it? Then that is your air is filtered. Air filtered or air is entered into the boiling pot. Hmm? And uh, during the process of boiling, some water vapor is uh, produced, and uh, that water vapor comes out with the exhaust pipe and it is accumulated in this your plug. And uh, he don't observe any presence of microorganism. Do you get any differences between the previous experiment and this experiment? Hmm? Any differences? Have you observed? In the previous experiment, he has heated the air. Air is sterilized through the process of heating. But here air is, is allowed to pass through the cotton plug 
and during the passes of what air through the cotton plug that is sterilized. Clear now? Then John Y. Tyndall. Actually, he was an English physicist. English physicist he was. And what he has done, that is, he said that the different, the different type of infusion, sterile when sterile infusions are allowed to enter into a dust field chamber, then they became sterile for a longer period of time. Even though air is allowed to move in that chamber. Hmm? Even though and uh, what he has done and his uh, theory is known as your introduced the process of tindalization that is the intermittent heating and the cooling to preserve the food material and according to him that is the organism that is that may cause any infection are present in the air the microorganisms are present in the air then Different type of infusion, they are, they require different level of heating for sterilization. And in general, in a vegetative, in general, in different type of infusion, it requires a different heating for sterilization. I have already mentioned, is not it? Then, according to him, any infusions, that contains two different part. One is known as your heat labile part, that is known also known as your vegetative part, and the another part is known as your hmm, heat resistant, that is the endospore. And that endospores generally after cooling, they form the vegetative structure or labile structure. Then they may cause infection to the food materials or anything. Hmm? Therefore, what he has done, the, the Tyndale, he first, he, he was able to sterilize some material by the process of this process, and but he failed to sterilize the hay in a single heating. Therefore, what he has done, he has heated any vegetable infusion any infusion hmm, for about some time. Sometimes first he has um, given the heating, then it is allowed to cool for some time. Then again that material is heated, then again it is allowed to cool. That process is repeated for several time. And uh, during that process what will happen? That is the heat resistant part of the infusion will be transformed into heat labile form. And uh, during cooling that heat labile form is uh, formed, then again in heating that heat labile form is sterilized. That process is if done for several time that is uh, heating and cooling, heating and cooling that is repeated heating and cooling. If it is done for several time then whatever infectious materials or germs is a present in the material is sterilized. Hmm? That is the, that is known as tindalization. That theory was known as tindalization. And he proved that the infectious agent is a present in the air. And from the air that our microorganisms comes. Before that, Louis Pasteur, he has given then Louis Pasteur. Have you heard about the name of Louis Pasteur? 
He has given the final blow to the theory of abiogenesis in the year 1864. That is the picture of picture of Louis Pasteur. Have you observed previously? Hmm? Pasteur, have you heard about Pasteur? Hmm? Yes. Huh. He demonstrated to disprove the theory of abiogenesis, he, what he has done, he has conducted one experiment. And that experiment was known as swan neck experiment. Swan neck experiment and what he has done, he has prepared one specialized flux, one specialized flux with a very long narrow goose like opening. That is the that is the flux he has prepared that is with a long goose like opening. And that experiment was known as Pasteur's goose neck experiment and the flux is known as Pasteur's goose neck flux. And what he has done? He has put the broth, sterile broth here and he has heated the broth, heated the broth and during the process of heating this water air is allowed to enter through this your long neck and whatever warm heat water paper is produced that also goes out through this strip. That is his experiment is just like in cattle. We are preparing our tea in cattle, is not it? Hmm? There is only one outlet and through that outlet, through that pipe, through this glass pipe, water can move inside or it may go, water paper may go outside. And during this process, what will happen? Whatever germ present in the air, they will be accumulated here, hmm? accumulated here. That means only your filtered air is entered here. Hmm? And in this experiment, in the sterile broth of mutton, he don't observe any occurrence of microorganism because whatever your microorganisms or germs are present in the air, they are accumulated in the long neck. Hmm? And he disproved the theory of abiogenesis and he confirmed that water uh, air is essential for the growth of microorganism. And uh, what he has done? He has actually wine, wine, you know, wine. He has through this process actually, he has also sterile the wine, mutton bud, wine, soups, etc. So many things you can sterilize. And uh, Louis Pasteur, he has actually uh, heated the these things up to 50 to 56 degree centigrade. He has heated the broth or any liquid from 50 to 56 degree centigrade for some time. For few minutes. For some time, so that is your few minutes. Then his wine or fruit juice or soups were free of contaminants. That means he disproved the theory of abiogenesis. And that process is known as your pasteurization. Now what is pasteurization? Hmm? 
heating of liquid that is it may be milk it may be fruit juice it may be soups at a temperature of 50 to 56 degrees centigrade for few minutes hmm? then your materials will be food materials will be free of any germs that process is known as your pasteurization then any question up to this hmm? any doubt any question on pasteurization or tindalization in the name in the honor of the name of tindal that the intermittent heating and cooling process is a termed as your tindalization and pasteurization in the sterilization of the fluid or liquid that is in the honor of the name of the Louis Pasteur that process of sterilization is known as pasteurization. Hmm? Then any question? No, no, that is after 50 to 50 that is actually heating is done from for few minutes that materials milk. Generally, milk is sterilized through the process of pasteurization. That is, it is allowed to heat for few minutes at 50 to 56 degrees centigrade. Then it is allowed to cool automatically, naturally. Actually, your today's class is only on your spontaneous generation. In the next class, we will go through the germ theory of disease then fermentation, then immunization, and then your origin of life. That is in the next class. Hmm? Part, mm. the part. Mm. It will become infectious or the vegetative part itself it is infectious. Vegetative part is generally more infectious than the, your resistant one. Resistant means it, it is that resistance, it will is required to destroy the different form of microorganisms. Actually, all the microorganisms generally they are in two states. That is, one is your vegetative states, that is, your heat labile, heat labile states, and another is your endospore. state or heat resistant if you go for heating for one time for at a certain temperature that heat labile form that causes spoilage of any material that will be sterilized that will be killed Sterilized means that is your killed. First heating, they will kill. But after heating, it, if it is cool during cooling, then that is your heat resistant part. That is your endospore state. They become transformed into your vegetative states. And that part will able to cause spoilage of that material. Therefore, what he has done, he has first heated heated, then it is cooled, then again it is heated, then it is cooled, that is repeated for several times. Therefore, what will happen? All the, the heat resistant forms, whatever is present in that particular material, will be converted into the heat level form one by one. Hmm? Heat level forms in the several stages, and ultimately they will be sterilized or they will be killed. And that is the main effect of tindalization. Now, clear? Okay, then. On cooling. on cooling, yeah, that heat resistant form 
is a converted into vegetative stage during the process of cooling. Then again if you go for heating, then during that process of heating, that vegetative only, you try to remember one point, that is only the vegetative stage, that is heat level stage is sterilized, killed. Hmm? Therefore, that is converted one by one. Clear now? Then any question? Hmm? Swan leg experiment? <laughs>